Hello and welcome to TCC Group's orientation webinar for the Foundation Core Capacity Assessment Tool, or as we like to call it, the FCAT. This short presentation is designed to give prospective FCAT takers an overview of the tool and an understanding of what they can expect from the FCAT process. An earlier version of this webinar was presented live last week, April 14, 2016. This is not an interactive session today, however, the content is the same as the earlier webinar. Before we move on to the agenda for the session, we'd just like to share a brief introduction to TCC Group, which created the FCAT. TCC Group is a national consulting firm that works with foundations, nonprofits, and corporate community programs. In our work, we address complex social problems by heightening our clients' understanding of their collaborative role in society and helping them strengthen strategy, build capacity, and advance assessment and evaluative learning. So clearly the FCAT feeds right into that mission. Great, so uh, we'll start with an overview of the FCAT today and the purpose behind it. Then we'll pivot to FCAT process, which is simply what will happen when you take the tool. And we'll close out the webinar today with some frequently asked questions uh, and reference some questions we received last week from participants in the interactive webinar. So starting with the overview of the FCAT. What is the FCAT? The Foundation Core Capacity Assessment Tool is a rigorously designed tool that gathers independent perspectives of internal stakeholders at the foundation to measure capacity is critical to a wide variety of foundations. The impetus for the FCAT um, is pretty straightforward. For many years, the social sector has witnessed an increase in the attention paid to nonprofit and grantee capacity, but comparatively little formal and field-wide examination of the kinds of grantee perceptions, uh, of the kind of institutional capacity needed by foundations to deliver on their missions beyond that narrow focus on grantee perceptions. So with this in mind, in recent years, TCC Group has partnered with some foundations to start a conversation around what their own capacity for grant making and non-grant making activities or complementary activities entails. And the FCAT emerged from this body of work. The FCAT allows foundations to gauge their capacity in a variety of areas. The primary categories include leadership capacity, the ability of the foundation leaders to create and sustain the foundation's vision, to innovate, to provide direction in order to advance organizational mission, adaptive capacity, uh, which reflects the foundation's ability to monitor, assess, and respond to internal and external changes, management capacity, which is about the foundation's ability to ensure the effective and efficient use of organizational resources, and technical capacity, uh, which is simply the ability of the foundation to implement key organizational and programmatic functions. And the FCAT also measures some capacities related to organizational culture as well. I'd like to draw your attention to the last bullet point on this slide, which is uh, the, what is the FCAT is not. Um, the FCAT is not a report card. It really represents a snapshot in time. So there is no way for a foundation to, quote unquote, fail the FCAT. Um, we like to think of it as a conversation starter, um, a mechanism for robust learning, uh, and a way for your, you know, to start that conversation in your foundation about how to think about your strengths and challenges and capacity. So what does the FCAT measure? Uh, participants we're gonna, are going to rate the foundation's capacity in a variety of areas. And the items listed here, or the categories listed here, are really just a sampling of what you'll find in the FCAT. There are a range of internal capacities measured and also external ones as well. Some are more reflective of internal operations and the, so the inner workings, efficiency and the effectiveness of the organization itself internally, and some of them are more external focused, um, and some of them measure uh, very, you know, grant making related areas as well. So who should take the FCAT? There are a couple of important things to keep in mind when you're thinking about whether the FCAT is the appropriate assessment tool for you. Um, the tool is really designed, in this case, for grant-making foundations, so direct grant makers. That might include independent foundations, family foundations, community foundations, or corporate foundations in some cases. Uh, another requirement to take the FCAT is three minimum qualified participants. Uh, what do we mean by qualified? Well, we recommend that staff who are familiar with the FCAT's capacity categories, which we outlined on the last slide, 
that's leadership, management, adaptive, technical, and culture capacities, um, take the FCAT. Those individuals who are involved in grant making might feel like they are best suited to answer some questions, but really many questions apply to, both, to those both in and out of direct grant making roles. That might include your program staff, your research staff, evaluation employees, even senior administrative leadership or IT staff, anybody who's got some familiarity with grant making systems. Some foundations may have board members who fit this description as well. And if your foundation's board members do have sufficient working knowledge of operations or management, they might be good candidates to take the FCAT. Otherwise, we generally discourage board members from taking the FCAT. And if you have any questions about that, uh, feel free to send them to us. There's an email you'll see later on in this presentation. And we encourage your feedback and your questions. The three minimum required participants, just to note, um, are really required to safeguard your anonymity as well because we aggregate responses and we'll average scores and send them back to you and in a report. So it's really to protect anonymity. Um, it is not just an arbitrary number there. And finally, but very importantly, there's no upper limit on participants. So you could have um, many more than three at your foundation if you have a lot of board and staff who are interested in taking the tool. What does the FCAT survey look like? Um, it is an online survey. It's hosted currently on SurveyMonkey. There are approximately 175 items, which are really statements, um, and they're action or behavioral in nature. They're the same scale for all. It's a Likert scale of strongly agree to, uh, disagree to strongly agree. Foundation scores are based on aggregated anonymous responses to all the items. It takes about 45 minutes to finish the tool. Um, and in most cases, you do not have to complete the FCAT in one sitting. So if you receive your indiv individual link via email to your SurveyMonkey survey, you can go in, take about half of the questions, you know, go get a drink of water and come back um, and pick up where you left off. It will save your responses. There are some background questions that we do ask FCAT participants to fill out. Uh, there are about nine basic questions regarding your foundation type, um, your asset size, your staff size, uh, pretty easy questions to answer. And we will email those questions to the key contact at your foundation. And you can just send them back to us um, as your time permits. Finally, what can you expect to see in your FCAT report? So once all of your foundation's respondents have completed the FCAT, TCC Group will close the survey, we will generate your report, and send it to your organizational lead. And your organizational lead is sort of your key, just your key contact at the foundation for all things FCAT. The report will start with a suggestion about how to interpret your foundation's results, so you won't be left in the dark with a lot of charts that you can't understand. The FCAT report will also show your foundation's aggregated scores for different capacities, and it will highlight items, again, behavioral or action statements, where the foundation scored the highest and the lowest. The FCAT report is also interestingly going to highlight uh, which, if any, scales have significant variance. So for example, if you had a group of 10 taking FCAT at your foundation and five of them scored an item as a five and five of them scored it as a one, um, that would speak to some interesting diverging opinions about whether the foundation was strong or weak in a particular area. Um, so we think that's pretty instructive for learning conversations, uh, which is why we would bring that out if we see it in your scores. Moving on to FCAT process. So organizational leads, as we mentioned, are really just the point person at your foundation for the FCAT. We've been in touch with many of you already. Before you take the FCAT, we do suggest that you consult the document that we sent to organizational leads along with the registration chart. It's called Before You Take the FCAT. This will help you think about who should take the tool and how the report might be shared internally or externally. These are good things to think about actually before you jump into taking the survey itself. Respondents will have three weeks to finish their surveys unless you've been granted an extension by TCC Group for some reason. And we'll send reminders as necessary. So we'll be able to see who has started and who has submitted their unique surveys. And that will help you stay on top as an organizational lead and make sure that your foundation is finishing the FCAT in a timely manner so that you can get your report. Again, surveys don't have to be completed in one sitting. 
and reports are expected to be sent sometime over the summer. Um, this sort of depends on when we get all of the um, submissions in from all the participating foundations. There are a few tips um, that we recommend you use when you take the FCAT. Uh, we do use, uh, recommend using Internet Explorer, Incompatibility View, Firefox, Chrome, or Safari usually work best. We don't generally recommend that you take the FCAT survey on your phone. Um, it doesn't always open correctly, and, um, and we've had experiences with people not being able to save their data and revisit their survey on their phone. So we generally don't recommend that. It takes, again, about 45 minutes. doesn't have to be completed in one sitting. And another important point is that you can skip questions. So if you don't know the answer or if it's not really relevant to your foundation, you know, your foundation isn't penalized for any questions that are skipped by respondents whatsoever. So you can always skip. Moving on to frequently asked questions. So some of the foundations we've worked with have asked you know, how big does my foundation really need to be to take the foundation core capacity assessment tool? And the answer is there's really no minimum staff or asset size. We just ask that you have three qualified participants. Again, they can be staff, <coughs> staff or board, or even board, if the board members are all really intimately familiar with the inner workings of the foundation. That takes us to number two. Board members can take it. Um, it's not that common that only board members would take it, but there are some instances where that makes perfect sense. If you have any questions, if you're on the fence, please just give us a call or reach out to us um, at the email that you see on this slide. We're happy to work through the particulars of your foundation with you and figure out what makes the most sense. Um, in terms of taking the FCAT on the portfolio or program level versus the organization or foundation level, one can do that. Uh, and it, in fact, if you have a very, very large staff, this might make more sense than trying to um, you know, get buy-in and get uh, the number, you know, a lot of staff members, you know, 100 staff members to take it. So if you think that that might be appropriate for you, again, just reach out to us and we're happy to help you figure out how to implement the FCAT on a portfolio or a program level. Uh, we encourage you to reference this particular presentation as you take the FCAT. If you want to visit the FCAT launch page, that will be a resource, sort of a landing page for all things FCAT. This uh, webinar will be found there, as well as um, other webinars and reports as they become available through the FCAP. So as mentioned previously, this isn't designed as an interactive session. However, on the April 14th uh, iteration of this particular webinar, we did receive a couple of good questions that we would like to share with viewers of this webinar, along with our responses. One foundation asked whether a part-time consultant who was very familiar with the foundation could take the FCAT. Our feeling is that yes, this would be fine as long as the individual is indeed very knowledgeable about the workings and operations of the organization and can really take the FCAT through the lens of a staff member. So that would really be fine in that case. Another foundation asked us whether there was an optimal size for the participant group at a foundation. Is there such a thing as too many FCAT takers? Um, again, we have a minimum of three qualified individuals. There's no upper limit, and you know a foundation could theoretically invite many more than three to participate. If you're taking the FCAT, you know we would say that it's best to have a diversity of perspectives included. So you would, if you have a large number of staff, you might think a little bit about whether you're having representation across portfolios or programs or different departments at the foundation. Generally speaking, uh, you know, more perspectives and more diversity will make your FCAT report stronger. And if you're thinking about taking the FCAT at a portfolio or program level, because you have a large number of staff, again, just reach out to us. We're happy to suss that out and figure out whether it makes sense for you. On behalf of TCC Group, thanks for listening, and thanks for your interest in the Foundation Core Capacity Assessment Tool.